All right. Um, really don't have any injuries to talk about. Cole Hardman will be uh, back out at practice. We'll just see how he he does uh, in this ramp up process. So uh, haven't determined, you know, play or not play. We're just gonna uh, ease him back in and see where he's at. Everybody else will uh, will practice and do their thing. So for the challenge of playing the Texas, uh, you know, we, we again we know records. You can put those things aside at this time of the year. This this group here uh, plays hard. They're well coached, and um, we've got to make sure that we have a good week of practice and get ready for them. So for that time, Jim. Coach, how close is uh, Kadarius Tony to actually getting back on the field in live action for y'all? Yeah, so he, he he had a little bit of a ramp up last week, uh, which was good. Uh, came out of that feeling pretty good. So we'll see we'll see how he does this week and uh, make a decision, you know, down the road here. So um, take it day by day if you want to put that. I mean, that's, we'll just see how he got, does. Andy, with Patrick, you know, the previous week you said he had to eliminate <coughs> one dumb play a game. But this week you said he had a bad, bad play with the interception. What do you guys talk <coughs> about trying to eliminate those plays as you get into the stretch run? Yeah, well, nobody likes to make those. But at the same time, you don't want to – um, curve his aggressiveness uh, uh, and you know desire to make a play. So because he made a couple good ones too, and uh, that's not going to happen very often with him. It happens with every quarterback, but they got to keep firing. I mean, that's you, you start getting hesitant, and then everything falls apart on you. So um, he, he'll he'll learn from it and and move on. It's pretty simple things that that he. Uh, can adjust to, to fix it. So, and that's that's how he's wired. I mean, he's gonna go back and look at it, study it, and go, okay, got it under control. Here we go. With three <clears throat> drops, you know, there's the stat on Twitter is, you know, Patrick was 13 of 15 for 142 touchdowns, limited threats. Right? They also, also have times when they're dropping a lot of guys. When they, when they do that, is it is your offense structured that there's always something for that, or is it that you got to get to a different spot on the play sheet? And yeah. have the, you know, the the right dial up for, for when they do that. Yeah, you hope that you hope that it's situated within it. Um, however, there are some things that are better than others. Uh, you don't want to get caught in a guessing game. If you have a true hard soul tendency there that they're doing this on this down or this particular part of the field, um, then you can dial up one of these other plays. But uh, you know, normally your normal plays that we put in for the different areas normally cover that in there somewhere. Yeah. I don't know, do you, do you often come out and say, hey, I gotta, I gotta give him better things. Patrick comes out and says, I gotta make better decisions, right? But, so it's obviously a joint effort between Absolutely. you guys and the whole staff and everything. But, you know, how, obviously you get it right more than you get it wrong, right? You're not standing at that yeah. podium for this many years and right. you don't. But how often do you feel like you, oh, wow, they got me, right? You just have to tip your cap to the, the other coach. And, yeah, when I tell you that, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of tipping my hat to them. Uh, there, there are sometimes, it's, uh, you know, that, that's the fun part. It's a chess match. And every once in a while, they're going to get you. And you hope you get them more than they get you. And, um, and so there are some great minds in this league and good football minds. And so they're going to get you every once in a while. You know, he, it's, <coughs> we're at the latter third of the season and just I wonder with you guys' pursuit of Juju the year prior um, just what has he given the offense that perhaps you anticipated on his arrival and perhaps that you didn't anticipate yeah we were hoping that he could kind of counter Kels and um, this offense is best when you can kind of do that uh, you know, we had Sammy and then uh, Pringle developed into that as, as we went um, and that's that's when it rolls the best, and so he's come in and, and done that, and does a nice job with it. So um, he's got a great feel for the game. He's got great feel in space, <clears throat> and then he, he's he's really tough to bring down. I, you know, I kind of f forgot about that part. <laughs> After he gets that ball in his hands, man, you try to hit him in his lower body, you, you can shuck it off like a running back, you know. And, that's special to have that. Coach mentioned the culture be back. How did he handle his team 
last four weeks behind the scenes? And, and what are the unique traits that you, you felt like you missed over that stretch? And we lost a bunch of weight. And so it was a matter of kind of getting that back, but not, you know, with cheeseburgers, right? So, <laughs> so um, but get back some good, good uh, hearty weight and strength. And um, so he's been working on that. He's been working like crazy on that. Um, and he's going to continue to do that here. He'll do that this week when, when he's out practicing and doing that. Okay, can can we hold the weight and add a little bit to it? So, Coach, you mentioned um, throw the records out when you're facing a team that's, that's struggling with wins and losses. They've obviously battled hard. They almost won last week. This is a coach that you've seen in the past, right? What does what a, a Lovey Smith team look like traditionally, and yeah. has this team got some of those characteristics? Uh, no, it's, yeah. No, I'm friends with Lovey. I, mean, I, I think he's a heck of a guy. <clears throat> and a great coach. Um, so I, uh, you know, he, he came from that Tampa two group of coaches that did that, and he's evolved uh, with with that and with the way the game is now. So um, he's going to give you a great defense that plays hard and aggressive, um, an offense that's tough. I mean, just the fact that they used two quarterbacks and platooned them, it wasn't because one wasn't doing well. But they platooned him in, and uh, he's not afraid to do whatever he has to do to win the game, and um, and so th that's where the challenge comes in. And his guys play hard for him, so you you got to you have to be prepared and ready ready to go. And in this league, the margin between winning and losing is like that. It's just it's crazy, but greater than it's ever been right now. So your years at BYU overlapped with Mike Leach's. And I'm wondering if, if uh, you ever came across, I know he didn't play football, but did yeah. you come across him? And he was, yeah, I guess, sure. working in football, working in the office at some point during his career. Yeah, no, I, I, that was after, that was before me. Um, I'm a little bit older. Uh, but um, I, I, know, I knew Mike, and a good guy and uh, very creative. Um, he didn't visit here, but he spent some time with us in Philadelphia during training camp a couple different times. And, uh, just a, a good guy. I mean, it's a sad deal. Um, uh, but he, he left a left a nice legacy behind him for sure for for football. And uh, good, you know, like I said, uh, very unique. I mean, uh, the story. I love the story he told told me. But I said, um, do you, do you know Donald Trump. We got talking about that. This was years ago, even before Donald was a president. And um, and he goes. Uh, Oh yeah, I was walking through New York. I saw the tower, went up, introduced myself to him. Like it was no big deal. I mean, you know, he had, but he, in other, he talked himself through. I mean, Donald had security back then too. He talked himself through that, and and then uh, Donald found him that kind of personality. I mean, he was just a unique, unique guy, and that's why he coached, and uh, that's why everybody, you know, everybody loved him for for that. You know. Can you see Patrick Sutherland, the descendant? I mean, with, with yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. His coach, you know, mm -hmm. played for him, so or worked with him for sure. Yeah. Couple yeah. more guys. Coach, NFL exec uh, Troy Simpson said this morning at the league meeting there would be a quote a healthy discussion end quote on Megan roughing the passer, either reviewable or challengeable. Uh, so the discussions will come up in March at the owners meeting. How much do you support this sudden movement to make that roughing the passer penalty reviewable? Um, I'm gonna hold off on that because <laughs> I'm gonna be in those meetings. So, but just I'm gonna sit on the picket fence on that one. We'll go Nate and Sam to finish up. Um, maybe on, on another coach. Again, we're towards the latter half of the season. I just wonder with Mike Kafka being an offensive coordinator for the first time, have you had a conversation with him? Have you had time to look at? What the Giants have done, obviously, they're in a playoff push, but just seeing another guy being in, being in that uh, role. He's done. Under you. Yeah, we've texted back for it. I mean, we're both busy and cranking away. You don't have a lot of time to have phone calls and that. So, um, but we have texted, and, and uh, I think he's done a, a tremendous job. And they're, they're playing good football, and my hat goes off to him. And Dable, too. I mean, Dable was here. You guys know him. And, uh, uh, what a great job! That's a tough place, you know. The, that whole eastern seaboard area, man. That's a, a great competition right there. 
So that's, uh, I, I think my hat goes off to those guys. Yeah. Last one, Tom. And uh, I'm guessing you live by this time of the year, you've got a pretty good idea of where you guys are. But with the secondary being so young, how much are you still learning about the strengths and weaknesses, what you, what you guys can do with that? Yeah, so, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of getting through that part of the year where, you know, the bowl games are starting, season's over, and now you got another season. So uh, they kind of go through that whole rookie thing, and if, if they're playing, you know, they have the chance to play, and they're going, man, I'm, you know, my body's a little of this, and my mind's a little of this, and I, I got to power through it, and here we go. So, um, I, but I love their attitude. I love the way they, they compete, and I, I love the way they're getting better. And it's, uh, you know, early it was leaps and bounds, and now it's, you know, settled down a little bit to where it's smaller jumps. But um, I, we're going to be okay there. We just, the attitude's got to stay the way it is and, and keep competing and have a short memory uh, when you're back there. That's one thing you have to learn in this league, uh, that... Uh, you, you better learn from it, get that in there, and then get the garbage out, and then go compete the next play. So. All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you.